I also got a question regarding, you know, how can I create a framework? And based on these two questions, I created this slide where I will share which is my favorite setup for doing automation, which are my favorite uh, languages and frameworks for doing automation. And uh, I will explain a little bit about how you can actually create a framework. So a framework from my perspective, it's basically just a project. It's like a container where you can create code, where you cr create automation code. This project, you can think about it like a GitHub project, because every time you're going to create an automation project, which is based on a programming language, you will have to upload it to a uh, VCS, like GitHub or Perforce or SVN, whatever you're using, so a version control system. And so each project is going to be a framework, let's say. How can you configure the framework? So starting from the actual, um, let's say, structure. Here you can use Maven. Maven is very good at creating basic quick start type of projects. So if you, let's say, want to create a, a project where you want to, to do Selenium, uh, and if you want to use Java for that project, you can easily create a Maven project. For example, if you're using uh, an ID like IntelliJ, you have an option to create it from a screen there, and it will just uh, create the entire structure of the project, which means you will have folders there, and you will have the central piece of Maven, which is the POMXML file. That file is going to be uh, where you're going to specify what libraries or frameworks you want to use in your automation. So the, the POMXML file is like where you will define all your dependencies. They are so-called dependencies, like uh, Selenium, for example. So if you go to the POMXML file and you specify that you want Selenium, it will be automatically downloaded for you and your framework already allows you to uh, create Selenium tests because at the time you already have access to all of the Selenium code. So all of the Selenium library, which contains those methods for you know, opening a page, clicking on a button and so on and so on. So Maven easily allows you to create the framework because it creates the folder structure and the POMXML file you need. It also has some plugins for running tests, but yeah, that's like, a, it's a very long story here, but the idea is that it's, it can create the backbone for your framework. And what you add to the framework then is really up to you. My favorite setup here uh, that I, I have on this slide contains the library uh, or the framework Selenium for web UI testing. It also contains the Appium framework for mobile testing. Appium is also good because uh, not only does it do mobile, it also allows you to test some uh, desktop applications Last time I used it, for example, was for Windows applications. So it's very, very good. If you want to also test uh, API, uh, you can uh, import your rest assured library into your project. Again, all of these are done easily just by specifying an entry in the POMXML file. Uh, if you, you're curious about how to do this, just go to the Maven um, official documentation, official site, and you will see it's really, really easy to do. So basically in like maybe five minutes, you can create a structure with folders and with three uh, libraries that I already mentioned available for your tests. So all of these uh, mobile tests can be created already because you already have access to the Appium code because you have imported it into your uh, Maven project. Of course, you will need to, to do some further setup for your uh, phones, for emulators and so on, but you will have access to all of the code. So this is how you actually get started. This is how you will create your, let's say, placeholder for creating these three types of tests. Um, if you want, I mean, normally, what do we do? When we create the tests, we need to be able to like write them somewhere. So we need to create test classes. I know that many testers or most of the testers are using TestNG for creating their classes, creating their at test annotations, creating their at before class and so on annotations, and for running their tests. However, personally, I prefer JUnit 5. It's very similar to TestNG, but you know, as you probably already know, testers are more focused on TestNG and developers are using JUnit. I'm using JUnit 5, which is different from, for example, JUnit 4, which is a, an, an earlier version of JUnit, uh, because it has very uh, many great features. I really love uh, how easy it is to work with. So 
if I were to choose between JUnit 5 and TestNG, this would be my preferred setup. That doesn't mean TestNG is bad. No, they're a bit different, but this is just the one I would prefer. Um, another two very useful frameworks, which are, which are not necessarily uh, focused on testing, but are helping uh, with the testing are Spring and Apache Commons. I use Spring mostly for uh, working with the database because they have a very good class called uh, JDBC template, which allows you to easily connect to uh, the database, whether it's an SQL database or something else, and to query the database or to, you know, uh, query meaning, you know, you want to retrieve some data, or it helps you easily insert something into the database, update a road and so on with just one line of code. So it's really, really easy. You, you have a very small setup that, um, uh, that it needs in order to configure the uh, database you want to point to. But apart from that, doing the actual queries to the database, are it, it's, it's very, very easy. You just write one line of code and you execute a huge statement. And then you can even process the response. You can extract, for example, if your response is uh, rows and columns, you can extract all kinds of things like all of the rows, all of the columns, just one entry, which is on a certain row and column and so on. So it's very, very useful, very powerful. Another thing I use Spring for, which is very, very useful, it's working with environments. So Spring allows you to define um, one file for each environment where you want to run your tests. This is a properties file. So property files are just key value pairs, or um, they comprise of key uh, property, uh, key values. Okay, you know what I mean. So it's a file which has keys and values, right? This is a property file. Um, for example, one of the properties could be the URL of the environment. So in each of these files, you will specify which is the URL. From a configuration in the test, you can easily switch between the environments and you can just say, you know, I want to go to a certain environment and you specify a short name for the environment and that short name needs to be the same as the name of the file. If you want to open the URL for that, uh, like the home page, let's say, of that environment, you just need to read the URL property from the corresponding file. And in the test, you don't really care about what environment you're on. You just know that you're opening a URL and the configuration and the wiring behind it is going to choose uh, which is the URL that you're using based on you know, what is the, the, the environment you want to run. So you don't need to create environment specific tests because you just create the test you want to run and easily you can switch between all of the environments that you have. So as I said, these, I'm just giving you some pointers. Um, please look it up or you know, ask me afterwards for resources or how to, to get started with all of these. Uh, the last um, library I want to mention here, the Apache Commons, uh, is basically a collection of all kinds of helper code. It uh, has methods for helping you generate random strings, for example, in all kinds of formats, like maybe you just want random numbers, like maybe just random characters. Um, maybe you want to uh, work with strings in a sense that you need to extract some substrings out of a string based on certain characters or based on certain substrings that are in that string. So it's very, very powerful when it comes to extracting and parsing and retrieving uh, information from strings. It also has um, code for working with files easily. For example, you can, with one line of code, read the entire contents of a file. Um, like each line of the file can be set into a um, into a list of strings. So you can have a list of strings and each string corresponds to one line in the file and all kinds of useful things. For example, for copying folders, copying files, moving them around. And yeah, very, very easy to work with. Uh, One-liners, very, very good. So these are very useful uh, libraries. So these are the tools, uh, actually the, the frameworks or the libraries that I prefer to use and I also added IntelliJ here. Why? Because IntelliJ, my IDE that I use for uh, creating the code is very, very important to me on a daily basis. It helps me a lot to um, you know, be more efficient when I write the code because it either um, suggests 
things for me to to write you know like if i write something and it can be approved uh, it can suggest it to me either on the spot or by running the integrated uh, code analyzer tool um, it can automatically generate things for me like constructors setter or getter methods and so on and so on so it, it's a very powerful tool and i think not many testers really use the power of the IDE. So there are many, many shortcuts and improvements that we can obtain uh, for our code by using such uh, an IDE. So this is very good. Mm -hmm.